So what we're going to do today is take a look at doing a brood inspection. If you're new to, to keeping bees, then a brood inspection is something you need to do periodically to make sure your bees are happy and healthy in the brood box. Now, the brood box is the bottom box and boxes above the excluder here are called the honey supers. So we've got a flow hive super and a brood box. Now the brood box is more or less similar to any Langstroth hive. So what we're going to do is take this top box off and have a look in here. But prior to doing that, we're going to get our smoker going nice and strong and about three good puffs into the hive entrance or if you've got one of our flow hive bases you can also go between the, the um, core flute slider and the, and the top. So you're basically blowing some smoke under the screened bottom board. So like that. Now your smoker is going to keep producing a little bit of smoke so put that near the front of the hive where the bees can just get reminded that there's smoke around it helps calm them down. Now if you take a look at this hive you can see in the windows there's a little bit of activity but they're not full yet. So what we're going to do is take off the super and make sure the brood is okay underneath. If you have a close look there you can see they're just starting to wax up the flow frame parts. This super hasn't been on very long and it's good to see that they're, they're starting to, to complete the cells and soon hopefully they'll be putting nectar in them. So to lift the super off, we're going to want to open this door at the back here. So you notice there's no handle on the, on the back here, but there's no need for one because this is an even better handle here. If you have a look at those frames there, you'll see they're fresh frames with not much activity on it. But you can see the bees starting to walk around between the frames. So for those that are just tuning in, we're going to do a brood inspection and show you how to do that. If you're new to beekeeping, uh, put your questions in the comments below and we'll try and answer them while we're on this call. Also let us know what you'd like to see if you particularly want to see something to, to help you get going in beekeeping, let us know and we'll be sure to, to do a live um, show and tell of whether it be hive splits or honey harvests or whatever it is you'd like to see. So the next thing you need to do is get your hive tool. Now, after putting your, your bee suit on, if, if you need a beekeeping, do make sure you have a good bee suit. I'm going to use the bee jacket here. I need to put a um, hat on just to keep the, the mesh off the face um, and get the hair out of my eyes like that. The bee suit does up by these zips here. Now this is one of our Blowhive beekeeping jackets. They, these are probably my favourite just because of the simplicity of putting them on and off. Now I'm going to make sure these zips are overlapping the front and then there's a velcro that folds down over the top. Have your gloves handy. Now if you're new to beekeeping do wear your gloves until you get used to your bees and, and are comfortable to um, not wear them. Now I use gloves sometimes depending on how the hive is but I always have them handy. Next thing to do is make sure your hive tool is nice and clean. You don't want to share pathogens from one hive to the other. So give it a good scrub, get all the wax off, give it a good, good wash with some hot soapy water to make sure that it's clean. If it's really gunky you might need to flame it and um, get that wax off and give it a good sterilisation. Can you get stung while wearing a jacket? If you're beekeeping, then there's, uh, there's no way to, to make it so you won't get stung, but there's a way you can minimise it, right? So, so a good bee suit um, will help. Now, if you're concerned, then go for the full length one because there's a little bit more of a chance that they could get up under this section here and um, get inside your jacket and give you a, a, a sting. Now um, it does depend on your bees. Some hives are quite aggressive and some hives are, are really calm. Um, so in Australia we do have quite a lot of aggressive hives. 
in Europe, for instance, my sister's over there at the moment, and all of the uh, hives are, are so calm, you could probably do it without a bee suit altogether. So it does depend, depend a bit. Now, um, the jacket, I think, it's, it's my favourite choice, however, if I was going in for, for if they'd say I was like going to cut an aggressive hive out of somebody's wall, I'd probably use a full length suit just to make sure that they're not getting up under my jacket. But in this case, we will just go with the V jacket. If you've got some questions, put them in the comments below and we'll answer them. What we're doing today is a, um, a typical routine brood inspection of this flow hive. So the next thing we're going to do it's just we're going to keep that smoker going by uh, just giving it a, a little puff periodically and we're going to separate this top box from the excluder now you can choose to do it either side what I'm going to do is separate between the flow hive super and the queen excluder which sits there by putting the hive tool under the corner now after some time, if your hive's been together for a long time, this can be quite tough, but this one's pretty, pretty new, so what you're trying to do is just crack the corners like that, and cr cracking any wax build up. And you go around and do all of the corners, and then you can lever it up. And once you get it all the way up, it's a matter of then lifting the box off using the handle on one side and this lifting point here and when you put the super down it's a good idea to rest it up on an edge somewhere so that any bees underneath don't get squashed. The next thing to do is just lift off the queen excluder. Now this can often get really stuck but in this case they're only just starting to connect it to the frames which you can see here. So when you do this, nice and gently, have a little look for the queen on here. Sometimes she is on top of the, the uh, excluder here and you don't want to leave her orphaned from the hive. So I can't see her there. I'm going to put that excluder near the, near the hive entrance where those bees can walk back up into the hive. So, just in case the queen happens to be there. Okay, you can blow a little smoke into the hive if, you're, if your bees are getting a little agitated. Next thing to do is pull out your first brood frame. Now, to do that, I'm gonna add a little bit of smoke. Choose a frame that looks less stuck or less joined to other frames and um, if you have a look down in here you can see a bit of burr comb which is joining these two frames together. So what I'm going to do is just slice that off like that which will help that frame come out. Okay let's pull that frame out. So the hook here goes under the end of the frame. This is the tool that comes with any bee suit you buy from us. Okay, and then it just lifts like that. The same on the other end. And the first frame is the, is the hardest because there's no room to go sideways. So hand under one end and you can hook under the other. And what we're doing is just slowly coming up Nice and gentle, bringing out that brood frame. So let's have a look and see what's there. There's the queen actually, just there, ran around the corner. Let's have a look. Where did she go? She's just under the frame there. Let's see if we can find her on the other side. She just keeps sneaking back. <laughs> She's a little shy, this queen. So, let's see if we can get a good visual on her. There she is. She's a bit camera shy, but um, 
you know, each queen's an individual. So. Now, you don't necessarily have to find the queen, but it's, it's a um, neat if you do, but you can look for the presence of a queen to make sure they're healthy there. She is there. You can see that she's got a longer, longer abdomen. So she looks a bit like a worker bee, but just a longer bum and usually not stripy. See her right there, the tip of my finger, just darting around the corner again. And there she is. Back around the corner. So that was a stroke of luck to find the queen on the first frame. It's not always that easy. There she is, just at the tip of the hive tool there. She's moving very quickly, so she's a healthy queen. Okay. Donna says that she thought you just had a spout and simply pour the honey out. We do have a spout to pour the honey out, and that was my father and I's invention um, that we call the flow hive or flow frame. And the uh, brood nest is just the same as any other Langstroth beekeeping, right? So you still need to look after your bees, make sure they're happy and healthy. And when it comes to the honey harvesting bit, it is as simply simple as turning the handle and watching the honey come out. So that frame's got the queen on it. I don't want to put it down on the ground because I'm concerned we might lose the queen. So. What I'm going to do is just have a good look at that frame for any pest or disease issues and then put it back in the hive. So what we're seeing here is a beautiful looking brood. So when it looks like that, it looks beautiful. If it had sunken dark cappings with piercing in it, that would be signs of AFB, which is probably the worst one your beehive can get. Google that if you want to know what it looks like before you do your brood inspection and here you can see grubs down the cells little white grubs that's the the bees in their larvae stage and just like all insects when they're uh, ready to go through their metamorphosis stage they they then cocoon which is the capped brood you can see here and the other side looks healthy too, so that's good. I can't see any signs of chalk brood, which is kind of like mummified bees in the bottom of cells. They get a, and if you've got chalk brood, then generally it's not a major disaster, but sometimes you do need to introduce some new genetics into the hive to fix chalk brood. Not to be confused with white pollen in the bottom of cells, which I can also see here. So we're just going to be going through the hive frame by frame and checking all of the frames to make sure they're happy and healthy and then we'll be putting the hive back together. Now, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Having some technical, some technical difficulties here, Peter. Oh yeah, okay. Lost our stream? Yeah. Okay. Just wait a minute, come back Okay, some technical difficulties, if you can still hear it's very annoying. Okay, we're back. Sorry about the uh, glitch in the, the transmission signal here. So the bees are getting slightly more agitated. Now, it's not a bad idea to add a little bit more smoke every now and then to uh, make sure your bees are staying nice and calm. Get your smoker going again also. So for those that are just tuning in, we are doing a um, routine brood inspection of the flow hive, just going through each frame and checking whether the brood is happy and healthy. So if you're new to beekeeping, this will be an uh, insight into how you go about that and what you need to do. So I'm just gonna blow a little bit more smoke into this hive to get them to maintain their um, calm. 
calm demeanor here. Okay, so I'm going to pull out another frame and see how it's going. So again, if there's any wax joining the frames together, any comb joining the frame together, just want to get the hive tool and uh, break that off. We put the frame back in that had the queen on it. Now, it can be a bit tricky. If you've got bees in the way of where you're working, you can just blow a little bit of smoke and they will generally move out of the way for you. And then you can chop these joining pieces without harming any bees. Mark's asking how often should you check the hive like this? Okay, so how often you check the hive depends a little bit on where you, look, where you are and what type of season you are in. So for us, we check the hive. It's a typical commercial apiarist around here goes through their brood inspection twice a year or as needed. So if they notice a hive is struggling, there's not enough bees in there, then they might pull it apart and have a look at what's going on. Maybe they've lost their queen, etc. Um, in other countries, there's the varroa mite to deal with, which requires much more often brood inspections. And we don't have the varroa mite here yet, which is um, lucky, lucky, but um, advice on the varroa mite you might need to get from your local beekeepers or local bee club to find out how often you'll need to inspect your hive and deal with the mites. And it also depends on which treatment plan you use for that. So there's a little bit more wax to break here. Any questions, put them in the comments below. Also let us know what you'd like us to cover in future videos. This one's a typical brood inspection. We do have a little bit of um, comb joining some of these frames together. So. Ben wants One on top of the other. Okay, the, the bottom is not a brood box, it's just a stand to stand the box off the ground. Here we have cane toads that eat the bees, so we like to get the hives up off the ground, or the cane toads at night time come and knock on the hive and eat the bees when they come out to have a look. So the smoker can stay by the hive entrance to um, just keep that whiff of smoke going. Now this comb looks like it could be a bit messy to pull out because it's built out a little bit. Um, it's better. Let's have a look and see what's here as we pull it up. So there's a little bit of a honey bulge at the top. And, ooh, okay. So one thing that happens when you've got a big bit of honey bulging at the top is you can roll some bees. So hopefully these bees are okay. They got a bit stuck in honey as the frame came out. Now, that's um, a good reason to cut off that comb that joins the frames together. So here you can see healthy brood pattern around here. And you can see a bee just starting to hatch here and here, just at the tip of the, the tool. You can see the little antennae poking out of the cap as they chew their way out. And when they get out, some of their first um, duties will be cleaning the, the, the brood cells so they can be re-laid in. Very cool. So it's a fascinating world if you haven't done it before. Get into your beehive, have a look at what's going on, learn about your bees. If, if you're a bit nervous about it, then get some help from somebody more experienced as they show you how to do it. So this side again, we've got some brood, we've got a little bit of honey up the top. It's, um, and some sporadic pollen. Down the cells I can see bee eggs in the very bottom, which look like a tiny little grain of rice. So. We know there's a healthy laying queen if we're getting good brood and good eggs in our frame. Now, 
what I'm going to do is just lean this one frame up against the edge of the hive. And what that's going to allow us to do is just give us some sideways movement inside the, the box here so that it'll make it easier to get out the remaining frames. So now that I can go sideways, we don't have that same risk of rolling bees. So we take the frame out. Okay, some really nice brood here. So this hive's likely to get very busy soon with this amount of brood looking good in the cells. So all of these bees are going to hatch in the next 11 days because there's about 11 days they stay in the capped brood stage. Look at that, very nice. Again, I'm looking for any signs of sunken capping with piercings in it. It's a routine inspection to make sure that we don't have AFB or American fowl brood disease. Everything looks good here. Okay. I'm gonna put that frame back The The next one adjacent to that is honey. So I'm gonna leave that in there and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of smoke here to clear the bees away from where I'm working. And you're tuning in with your bees, I've noticed they've changed tune a little bit where it's slightly more agitated with the disturbance of the brood inspection so I just uh, I will put my gloves on if they um, start getting any more agitated now here you've got some brood of worker brood and down here see this brood that's poking out of the uh, it's got more like rounded lumps that's the male bees the drones and then the, the ones that are capped flush like that are the worker brood. So we've got worker and drones. Mary Ellen's asking, she says, my brood pattern is not as solid like this and I'm wondering why. Okay. So if you, beekeepers who, who breed bees tend to prefer a nice solid pattern. However, the, the odd um, cell missing is fine. Bees actually will crawl down cells and, and disconnect their flight muscles and vibrate to warm the brood on cold nights. So they do like to have a few cells to crawl down to warm the brood. Now, if you um, don't have a completely solid pattern, it may be to do with the season. They might be throttling down a little bit. There might not be enough forage around or the queen might not be laying that well. So you need to ascertain that. If the queen's not laying good brood, then your hive will slowly get weaker and weaker, in which case you need to introduce uh, a new queen. Now, it, it also could be, um, so if a honey flow starts and there's lots of, lots of nectar around and a month later they're not laying lots of good brood, then it might be time to change the queen. But um, it does depend and what the bees up to because they throttle the size of their hive how many eggs are getting laid to what's happening in the environment around them because they don't want to have lots of lots of uh, babies to feed if there's no nectar to feed them so now i'm just going to slide that comb over because we have the room and look at our next frame here if you've got questions put them in the comments below and we'll keep answering them Dana would like to know, what do you find is the best material to use in a smoker? Okay, um, the, the smoker fuel, I often use what I have around me and it's probably because I'm not terribly organised, but um, here today we've just got some mulch, um, it's a sugarcane mulch from the garden and that's what I've used. I do find pine needles uh, are pretty good, I have pine trees at home near my apiary so that's what I tend to use. Um, it doesn't last that long though, so then I get the bark off the tallow wood tree and put that in, which lasts well. So people get 
get um, stuck on what they use for their smoker. Some use dried out cow poo, others use hessian sacks that they hang on the fence for a month and all sorts of things. But to me, it's just whatever you have available, whether it's some dry leaves, some dry mulch, pine needles, or if it's really wet and there's nothing else to find, then use some cardboard and paper. Okay, I can see the bees doing their, their waggle dances here. So here's a, here's a waggle dance on the comb surface. So if you follow this bee here, it's, it's moving around in a, in a figure of eight pattern and waggling. So what that's telling the hive is which direction to fly in and how far to get to a nectar source. It's absolutely extraordinary. They can transmit enough information to the hive in the dark to tell them exactly where. And I know that it's more exact than just which direction and how far, because I've had them coming into my shed when I've been doing experiments. They're coming in to, to lick some honey and I close one door and open another and, and the bees are confused for a while till a scout bee comes in and uh, finds the other door and then goes back to the hive, does the dance and say, hey, it's, it's two meters around the corner of the other door. So it's exact information there they're transmitting to the hive and how they do it in the darkness through dance is just extraordinary. So gently just sliding your frames back in. This hive looks pretty good. We're going to um, see it boom in the next month and hopefully if the nectar flow coincides we'll also get some good honey filling it, the flow super and be able to enjoy the spoils of what the bees bring in. We'll check this next frame and then we'll start putting the hive back together. Looks like we've got a bit of honey on this side. So a typical brood pattern is honey at the edges, then we move into pollen and, uh, and drones and then the worker brood more so is more intense in the center. So it's good when you're working to respect that brood pattern and make sure when you're putting it back together, it's in that same order. And if you can just put it back in the same order as you pulled the frames out in. And that's because you'll get waves like this in the comb and you don't want to be in a situation where you're mashing combs together. Amazing pollen on this bee here. See this bright orange pollen so it's a good sign. They're bringing in pollen, they're bringing in nectar, they're raising good brood. This hive's happy and healthy. It's a, it's a privilege to be able to look into this world. Here's another waggle dance happening. If you see it here. Okay, it's just wandered off. So sometimes it's a grooming dance, so they'll, they'll do, do a bit of a waggle when they're not actually transmitting information, but they're telling others that they, they need a grooming. So another bee will jump on and, and uh, give it a bit of a, a clean up. There's another, another waggle dance here. Just at the end of my tool, you can see those bees waggling away. Okay. Do you not lose bees to swarming if you only check a couple of times a year? So, the, if your bees are, are building up, check out our last Facebook Live episode. We covered how to split your hive. So you've got a few options. You can either, if you're too late, then the bees will build up and swarm. And if you're around, then that, that might be okay. You can catch the swarm and start another colony but perhaps you're in an urban area and you prefer that not to happen, in which case you'll need to um, take a hive split. And there's lots of people looking for bees, so, so it's a good thing to take a, um, take a hive split and you can either build up your own apiary and, and get another hive, or you can give it to a friend or sell it um, to someone. And around here, the, uh, a starter hive's fetching a pretty good price, so, so um, it might be something you want to do to um, get a little urn from your hive as your bees build up and also um, control the swarming. But check out last week's video to see that. It's called splitting your hive. And I went through a couple of methods on, on how to do that. 
So this is the one of the edge frames. Notice the bees are getting a little bit wonky here with their comb. So I'm going to make sure it goes back in in the same pattern. So sliding that frame down nice and gently into the hive and then we're going to be shifting them over because we've still got one frame out of the hive here that needs to go back in where it came from. And I believe it was in between these two frames here so when you slide these over just be aware of bees in between the frames around this region and we're sliding this one back over here we'll see if we can get enough room to put our frame back in these boxes do are quite roomy which you'll appreciate um, later when your bees get busy but if there is any extra space make sure the frame is on the edge so one bee was just getting a bit agitated there it's probably about time I blew a little bit more smoke into the hive to keep them nice and calm How long will a beehive last, like a hive? Okay, so if you're asking about the wooden ware, the Western Red Cedar is the, the longer lasting outdoor wood. It's naturally protective and it's also nice and light. So there are people that have had Western Red Cedar brood boxes last for 50 years. Now, um, it, I haven't been using uh, Western Red Cedar that long. <laughs> um, so, um, because I'm not 50 yet, um, so we don't have that personal experience to, to share with you, but um, it is the longer lasting wood that the pine hives, um, if you get a typical radiata box, anywhere from, um, I guess, three to 10 years, depending on how you treat it, but you can get some rot setting in if you're in a humid, wet climate. The Aracaria hives are, are, are grayed up from the radiata pine that's commonly used. So it's about in between the cedar and the radiata pine in terms of how long it lasts. Now, if you're asking about the, the bees themselves, the queen lives for about six years, but they will breed a new queen. So all going well, your hive will last many, many years of um, good honey making but um, you will get situations where they might um, get sick and you might need to intervene and help them get back on their feet. Okay. Misty's asking, are waves or wonky comb a problem? Does it need to be fixed? If, if you can fix the wonky comb, then that's good. So if you're using naturally drawn comb like this is, Typically out towards the edges, they start to get a little bit wonky. And um, it's not a bad idea to, when you first install it, to check regularly, make sure they're building nice and straight so you get nice straight combs like this. If you haven't done that and they're a bit wonky on the edge, then there's a few things you can do. One is you can just pull out those frames, typically on their edge, they're honey only. So if they're honey only, you can pull them out and enjoy eating the wonky honeycomb and put in some new ones and hopefully they build straight the next time. If there, and it, if you are putting in a new one, you could put it in between two straight ones that would, would guarantee they build straight down. Um, you can put uh, wire through the frame and put foundation in. A lot of beekeepers like to do that. I used to do a lot of that, but now I prefer just to let them do it themselves because basically um, I don't have time to do the, the wax and wiring. And I also like the bees to be able to build their own comb and naturally size the cells for their brood. I believe it has a, a good health impact for the bees. I'm just pushing these frames over. So any more questions put them in the comments below and let us know what you'd like to see us cover next week and we'll have something interesting to show you. So sliding gently down like this moving bees out of the way.
trying not to squash any. Mary Ellen's asking what should she do with the remaining colony after her swarm, after her colony swarms. Okay, if your colony swarm, that's their natural method of dividing their hive. So that's how bees divide their colonies and make more. Now, so what's probably going to happen is your bees would have already raised a new queen in the box that's left behind. And over the next few months, they'll get back on their feet and build up again with the new queen. Now, do keep an eye on it because sometimes they don't get it together to make that new queen, in which case your colony will just get smaller and smaller and die out. So if, if you catch that early enough, you can introduce another queen or move a comb from another hive that has eggs on it for them to raise a new queen with. Typically what happens is the bees will just uh, be less in the hive for a while and slowly build up again. So during that time they are a bit more vulnerable to the small hive beetle if you have that in your area, in which case you'll want to trap them and make sure the bees stay happy um, and healthy without the hive beetles taking over. If there's not enough bees to cover all the frame surfaces, that's when the hive beetle can take an opportunity to lay their eggs. So I've got videos on how to make traps, but basically you can, you can put traps on this slider here. Look at that, isn't that interesting? See the, the honey spills onto the slider, just from me expect, inspecting the brood. Because I broke some honey, some drips came through onto the slider. Now, if you've got the flow hive too, then we have a tray here you can use to catch the small hive beetles and monitor your hive by putting oil in this tray here. So, any more questions? See, Keep asking. Two or more, more than one brood box, would you check both of them at the same time? So it's a good idea to, to go through your apiary routinely. If you've got a lot of hives, it's a bit of work. You probably want to get someone to come and help you. And you go through and you check all of the combs in your brood and make sure there's no, no um, AFB or any other more minor diseases present. Um, so, but it's up to you when you do it. Um, depending on your time schedule, you might only have time to do one or two hives and then come back another day. So thanks very much for watching. We've showed you how to do a, a typical brood inspection. The next thing to do is to put your hive back together by putting your excluder on top like this. And just give it a little bit of a wiggle to get the bees out of the way. And then your super can go back on top. Okay, let the lids just come off a little bit here. So now I'm picking up that honey super. It's not heavy with honey, but if it is, you might need to get some help lifting it, depending on how strong you are. Okay, so the super's now back on. Make sure everything's lined up. I'm just giving it a little push. Sorry about that little bee. Windows go back on and you've completed your brood inspection. You can see the bees running in the super now. They'll calm down again soon, but you can see they're a little bit agitated. And over the next few uh, weeks and months, we'll see a lot of bees and some good honey coming into this hive. If you've got any questions, keep putting them in the comments below. We'll keep answering them. Thanks very much for watching and see you again next week.